The physics forceps are specifically designed for predictable atraumatic extraction technique that conserves tissue. This is accomplished by utilizing physical principles and biochemical properties. The forceps consist of a beak designed to be placed on the root surface and a bumper to be placed in the opposite vestibule. The physical principle involves a lever to magnify the force being applied by the forceps so that the operator can generate the amount of force needed to move the tooth without applying excess force that might break the root or the adjacent bone. Archimedes said, give me a lever long enough and I can move the world. What the Greek mathematician was describing is that the moment of force or torque increases as the distance between where the force is applied and the fulcrum increases. Therefore, the greater the distance between the beak of the forceps on the tooth and the bumper in the vestibule, the greater leverage of force. The biochemical property involves the release of hyaluronic acid into the periodontal ligament space from the forces generated by the physics forceps. This causes the attachment to the socket to break down and makes tooth removal easier. This breakdown of the attachment is more effective if the forces being applied are light and constant rather than heavy and intermittent. The combination of light, constant force in one direction to break down the attachment with the leveraged force from the class one lever principle makes for less likelihood of root or bone fracture during extraction. It's important to note that once the tooth is elevated coronally out of the socket, continued rotation of the tooth buccally or lingually is not advised to prevent damage to the buccal or lingual plate. At this point, a rongeur or traditional forcep can be used to quickly and easily remove the loosened tooth. The physics forceps make the extraction of any tooth easier, more predictable, and less traumatic for patient and practitioner alike. We're going to remove an upper anterior tooth, a tooth that was deemed non-restorable by our endodontist. The patient has some symptoms. We see some tissue changes uh, occurring on the facial aspect of the tooth, uh, a tooth that had a crown, and we, we deem that this tooth needs to come out. So how do we do this? We will take our physics forcep, our standard series of physics forcep. Remember, it has two parts. The beak is the working part. We're going to engage the palatal or lingual surface of that root one to three millimeters subgingival. Now this is a crown, so I don't want to engage the, the margin of the crown. I actually want to be onto the root structure. If you engage the crown, the crown may come out first. Not a problem, but we, we want to be efficient in our extracting of this root. So we want to maintain the buccal plate, the facial plate of, plate of bone. We want to maintain the interdental papilla of bone. We want to maintain the interceptal bone, which will maintain the inner, uh, inner dental papilla, which is very, very important in the aesthetic zone. It's important in all parts of the mouth, but especially in the aesthetic zone. Now you can see that, that we have something green there. What is that? Well, that's a little silicone, what we call a bumper, uh, and it's disposable. You, they're one-time use, you throw them away, and it kind of cushions the area. Are we going to damage that, that uh, facial tissue? No, because we're not squeezing the instrument. We are not squeezing the instrument. The working part of the instrument is the beak, which is a lever, which is going to disengage the tooth out of the socket. So we're simply putting pressure. Now in this situation, I'm using rotational pressure, and I would actually, I'm a right-handed dentist. I don't have a lot of strength in my left hand, but I would use my left hand in this situation to demonstrate how I'm not squeezing, I'm not putting a lot of pressure, and I'm simply rotating my wrist, I'm rotating my wrist, I'm rotating my wrist towards the tip of the nose. Not squeezing the instrument, it's not a conventional force up, and what's going to happen over a period of minutes, and it may take several minutes for this to happen, we have to be patient as dentists, your, your, your memory, your muscle memory is, is going to tell you to squeeze the instrument, and try to get that tooth out, as quickly as you can. And I'm telling you, don't do that. Don't squeeze the instrument. Hold the handles as far back at the edge of the handle as you can. And here you're rotating your wrist. No bicep, no forearm, no shoulder pressure. Rotating your wrist only towards the tip of the nose. You're placing tension 
onto the palatal surface of the root. Tension. Now remember, the, the instrument is not intended to remove the tooth in total. It's intended to luxate the tooth a millimeter to three millimeters up and out of the socket. So I'll go back and I'll take my bird beak tooth delivery instrument and I'll grab onto it and I'm simply going to rotate it and remove that tooth right out of the socket. And you can see we had a long skinny root and we have an outstanding atraumatic extraction where the patient doesn't feel it because there's no force being put on it. We're not squeezing the instrument, we're not harming the patient at all. The patients are often amazed at how simple the procedure is and oftentimes they'll say, you're kidding, you're, you're, you're done? It's the best extraction they ever had. These patients go out and market your practice. They'll go out and tell their family and friends how incredible you are. It really is magic. More importantly, we have good facial bone, we maintain the interceptal bone, and in this situation, we, we will be able to maintain the interdental papilla. This instrument is outstanding also if you had veneers in the adjacent teeth. Those, many of us have tried to luxate a tooth um, around existing crowns or veneers, and you can easily break porcelain. You won't do that with this technique because there's no pressure being placed on the adjacent teeth or the adjacent porcelain at all.